In this lesson, we will be discussing motivational interviewing, a guide for conversations, often called MI. The objectives of this lesson are to identify the principles and spirit of MI, list the ingredients for change, examine what prevents motivation, and recognize MI moments, and then to provide some examples of conversations using MI. MI is defined as a person-centered, goal-oriented method of communication. MI is often used for strengthening motivation for positive change. There are 10 elements to MI, collaborative communication style, focused on change, eliciting and strengthening intrinsic motivation. It's centered on the person and honoring autonomy, goal-oriented, guided by patient, Person, converse, the person's conversation, its brief contacts, learnable skills, observable skills that can be measured, and it's adaptable. So here's our first checkpoint. Which of the key elements of MI involves bringing out the participants' opinions and ideas to promote lasting change? Is it collaboration, autonomy, or use of engaged, active listening followed by responses? The correct answer is the use of engaged, active listening, followed by responses. So MI as a conversation involves engaging, active listening and responding. It allows a participant to determine the path for adaptation and also allows a clinician to determine what might be helpful. MI is a short conversation over a long period of time. MI is helpful when there is a need for information sharing, when the person is not following a plan or seems unclear about what to do, or when they're focused on where the person is regarding the ingredients to make change. MI is not helpful if a person has a set plan that is working and they're already committed. Here's some reasons to use MI. It works and it's in it is the opposite approach to confrontational, which has had poor results in healthcare. It's welcoming and easy to use, and it doesn't cost much. It's a small intervention that is quick and has big effect, and it makes clinicians' jobs easier and more enjoyable. It increases both adherence, like to medications, and motivation to behavior change, like improving your diet if you're a diabetic. So MI moments occur and understanding what they are can help you as a clinician understand when to use MI. An MI moment is a point in time when a person seems uncertain, ambivalent, or not ready for a decision regarding a behavior change. Like the person wants to make the change but does not feel able. An MI moment is when you know that a discussion might be helpful or that information needs to be shared. Like when you know the person has some, but not all the information to make a decision, or an MI moment is when a person directly seeks advice or assistance from a clinician. MI moments are a cue to know when to use MI. Here are the four principles of MI. Express empathy. Understand reality of the person's situation. Develop discrepancy. Focus on personalizing desire, reason, and ability for change. Then roll with resistance. Don't push for change, order or confront, and don't provide information prematurely or without permission. Support self-efficacy. Help others to find ways to be successful that will work for them and identify skills and abilities that will help them make change. MI is a type of conversation that is collaborative, non-authoritarian, partnering style, where you're working together, not against one another. MI conversations elicit what is important to the client, their ideas and needs and assumptions, and views the person as the expert. MI conversations support autonomy, that the person will exercise choice and the clinician supports and affirms the person's responsibility working together to increase options. Here's how the usual care medical conversation contrasts to an MI conversation. In MI, the conversation is collaborative, 
while in usual care, medical conversation is confrontational. In the MI conversation, it elicits ideas and the person is the expert. While in usual care, medical conversation, the medical person is always the expert in telling new ideas and educating. In the MI conversation, it supports autonomy. While in usual care, the conversation is authoritarian. For most clinicians over the age of 40, we were taught how to conduct medical conversations in a telling authoritarian way that seems confrontational to the person we're con conversing with. So to use MI change talk acronym, here's a here's an acronym called DARN. It means desirability, reason, and need. And here's what each means. Desire. I want to get a handle on this. Ability. I can manage this change. Reason. It would be beneficial for me to change. Or need. I need to do this. I know I should. Just like change talk when leading a readiness to change conversation. Change talk helps lead the MI conversation. So here's another checkpoint. In, ch in change talk, the term DARN stands for desire, ability, reason, and need, or drive, action, rationale, norming, or dunking, archive, resources, and necking. The correct answer is desire, ability, reason, and need. When using MI, it is also helpful to seek a commitment to change, which is known as CAPT, Commitment, Activation, and Taking Steps. Commitment is, I will work on this change. Well, activation is, I am ready to do this. And taking steps is, there are steps I will take, or I am taking steps. And here's another checkpoint. In commitment for change, the term CAT stands for communication arguing timing, or concurring autonomy telling, or commitment, activation, and taking steps. The correct answer is commitment, activation, and taking steps. And here's the third acronym used in MI. It's ORS. It helps us to remember the components of conversations. Open-ended questions, affirmation, reflection, and summary. Open-ended questions are used to gain knowledge and help set direction that will be useful and understand the person's reality. Affirmation is used to conduct recognition of efforts being made and knowledge already gathered. While reflection is used as a statement made back to the person capturing what you heard them say. In summary, in the summary, it's gathering together the information and figuring out the next steps. This structure will help you lead the MI conversation. So you're probably wondering why focus on reflection. Reflection is used to clarify what you're getting at. It invites a person to respond and set direction for the conversation. It also generates more change talk. Reflection prevents from getting, prevents us from getting caught in asking questions and shifting from being in charge to collaboration. Here are the most common reasons people have difficulty with behavior change. The change is un, not clear as being important, or the person is not confident in their ability in managing a change, or the person is not committed to action, which is connected to both importance and change ability. So next we will view the detailed steps in motivational interviewing. First, you set an agenda for the conversation. Second, start with open-ended questions. Third, listen. Fourth, reflect back what you heard and wait for a response. Fifth, Listen. Six, reflect back again or ask another open-ended question. Seven, respond based on what you heard from the person. Eight, if information is needed, first elicit knowledge, then ask permission to share information as needed. Ninth, check for understanding. And tenth, 
Continue the flow. Elicit, listen, and respond as needed. And when you're all done, summarize. So here's an example of a conversation using MI. The clinician says, hi, it's good to see you. Would it be okay if we talk for a moment about treatment options you're considering, which is asking permission. Joe says, sure, I guess. The clinician says, I'm wondering what, if anything, you decide to do about balance and strength exercises. That's an open-ended question. Joe says, I don't think that would help. I tried before and it didn't work. So the clinician says, you're unsure it is right for you at this time. This is reflection. Joe says, I feel I can manage on my own. Things are fine. I just don't do very much anymore. So the clinician says, you feel exercises to build balance and strength are beyond your ability to do, yet you would like to be more mobile. That's reflection again. Joe says, right. If I feel okay, except I can't get around very well, but I haven't fallen. The clinician said, what are some of the ways you've been preventing falls? That's another open-ended question. Joe says, I'm doing my best to use my grab bars, but I'm a little scared at night. So the clinician says, sounds like things are going okay, but that you would like to get around a little bit more. Can I give you some information that others have found to be supportive? That's asking permission. Joe says, sure. The clinician said, some people use these exercise bands and it has improved their strength and balance, which might help for you, providing information. Joe says, well, I would like to be stronger. So the clinician says, so you would be willing to try these exercises. Which do you think would you, you would do first? Checking for understanding. I might try one next week. The clinician says, sounds like you have a lot of insight in what is right for you, which is again reflection. Joe says, I will have to find a way. The clinician says, what other ideas do you have, which is an ongoing iteration. So clinicians have a natural inclination to make it better for the person. This can complicate care. Telling the person what to do and how to do it and why they should do it without asking and learning from them what they think is the most common approach by the clinician. This can create resistance, moving away from partnering into expert downward role. When you find yourself doing this, stop and reset. Here's a case study of a real life My Choice participant who received this model of care during our pilot study. Prior to receiving care, this person had been in the My Choice program eight years. She was a 68-year-old female who lived alone in an apartment. She had a history of diabetes, coronary artery disease, hypertension, and macular degeneration. On assessment, she was having difficulty with coping with her health and finances and separated from her husband of 45 years. Her best friend was undergoing chemo for cancer and had financial struggles. She had decreased socialization, decreased vision and inability to drive, and depression. Her goals were to improve her ability to prevent a fall, medication management, and improve IADLs in mood, her mood. Here's her person-centered service plan. To you, they may, these may seem like needs that would have been addressed in the My Choice program, but they were not. The focus of the MI conversation was to address her mood. She was very tearful during initial visits with the care team. The MI conversation approach was used, including change talk, to elicit. The social worker set an agenda for the conversation around her mood and tearfulness and started with open-ended questions. What are you sad about? How does this impact your life? The social worker listened and then reflected back what was heard that all the life changes made her feel depressed, then waited for a response to that statement. She listened again, then reflected back that since all the life changes, she was unable to get up in the morning and not going out of the house and sleeping a lot. The social worker asked another open-ended question. Have you ever had counseling or talked to anyone? How did that work for you? Are you willing to try it again? Then the social worker responded back on what she heard from the person, a willingness to try counseling. Then she elicited the knowledge base about counseling services in the area and asked if information was needed and asked permission to share the information. 
Once completed, the social worker checked for understanding and summarized. After the MI conversation resources were used from the crisis line and CMH services, she followed through with getting help. In summary, MI is a brief conversation that is focused, informative, practical, and supportive. It's not pushy or judgmental and is highly effective at helping people change their behavior. Thank you.